When you are trying to answer a research question, you need to gather evidence or clues. Come with me and I will show you how to classify all the evidence you collect as you research your ancestors. Hi, thanks for coming. I am Mari Stotz Pratt and I'm a professional genealogist. And today I want to share with you how to classify genealogical evidence. In order to classify genealogical evidence, you must have a research question. If you don't have a research question, you don't know the purpose of gathering evidence. Genealogists classify evidence as either direct, indirect, or negative evidence. Classifying evidence helps us answer how our research question is answered, not just what the answer is. If your research question is, when were John and Sarah married, and you have a marriage certificate that lists their marriage date as April 15th, 1863, the answer to your research question is April 15th, 1863. Your research question is answered directly by the evidence, which is the marriage date given in the record. This is the easiest evidence to classify. If you can cover the answer to your research question with one finger, then your research question was answered directly by the information. Indirect evidence is when you need more than one piece of information from the document or from multiple documents to answer your research question. One example of this is if your research question was, where was John born? If you look at his christening record and it says that he was born on January 2nd, 1759 and christened on January 3rd, 1759 in Warwick, England, you have indirect evidence that John was probably born in Warwick, England. The record does not directly state that he was born in Warwick, but the fact that Warwick was where he was christened the day after he was born and his parents probably had him christened in the area they were living provides indirect evidence that he was probably born in Warwick. We had to look at three pieces of information on the christening record to determine the answer to the research question. Sometimes we run into a situation where the absence of information answers the research question. If your research question was, did Sarah live in the household of her father in 1870, and you search the 1870 US Census for Sarah's father's household and notice that she is not there, the answer to your research question is no, Sarah did not live in the household of her father in 1870. The negative evidence refers to the absence of information you would expect to find. Because she was not there, this is negative evidence. However, if your research question had been, where was Sarah living in 1870? And you were using the census entry for her father's household to answer your question, and you found that she was not in that household, your answer to your research question would be, I don't know where Sarah was living in 1870. This record would have provided you with no evidence to answer your research question. It's important to keep in mind that you must have a research question in order to classify evidence. And it depends on how you word your question as to how your answer will be classified. It's also important to remember that you can still classify wrong information. For example, my marriage license listed my hometown as Crosby, Utah, when it should have said Crosby, Texas. If the research question was, where was Mari's hometown? The answer, according to this record, would be Crosby, Utah. And it would be direct information because it was stated directly on the record. Just because the information is wrong, it doesn't change the evidence classification. And just because it's stated directly doesn't mean the information is correct. It's always important to look for multiple sources of information when you are looking for answers to your research question. Classifying evidence gets easier with practice, so make sure that you are asking good research questions and being intentional as you search for sources of information and that you practice looking for how your research question is answered. Please take a second to like this video if you feel like you understand classifying evidence a bit better and subscribe and share this video with your family history loving friends. 
Share in the comments below some of your questions and examples about how to classify evidence. And happy discovering!